for SCP-682, Object Class Keter. Special Containment Procedures SCP-682 must be destroyed as soon as possible. At this time, no means available to SCP teams are capable of destroying SCP-682, only able to cause massive physical damage. SCP-682 should be contained within a 5m x 5m x 5m chamber with 25cm reinforced acid-resistant steel plate lining on all inside surfaces. The containment chamber should be filled with hydrochloric acid until SCP-682 is submerged and incapacitated. Any attempts of SCP-682 to move, speak, or breach containment should be reacted to quickly and with full force as called for by the circumstances. Personnel are forbidden to speak to SCP-682 for fear of provoking a rage state. All unauthorized personnel attempting to communicate to SCP-682 will be restrained and removed by force. Due to its frequent attempts at containment breach, difficulty of containment and incapacitation, and high threat of Foundation exposure, SCP-682 is to be contained in sight. The Foundation will use the best of its resources to maintain all land within 50 kilometers clear of human development. Description: SCP-682 is a large, vaguely reptile-like creature of unknown origin. It appears to be extremely intelligent and was observed to engage in complex communication with SCP-079 during their limited time of exposure. SCP-682 appears to have a hatred for all life, which has been expressed in several interviews during containment. See Addendum 682-B. SCP-682 has always been observed to have extremely high strength, speed, and reflexes, though exact levels varies with its form. SCP-682's physical body grows and changes very quickly, growing or decreasing in size as it consumes or sheds material. SCP-682 gains energy from anything it ingests, organic or inorganic. Digestion seems to be aided by a set of filtering gills inside of SCP-682's nostrils, which are able to remove usable matter from any liquid solution, enabling it to constantly regenerate from the acid it is contained in. SCP-682's regenerative capabilities and resilience are staggering, and SCP-682 has been seen moving and speaking with its body 87% destroyed or rotted. In case of containment breach, SCP-682 is to be tracked and recaptured by all available mobile task forces, and no team with fewer than seven members are cleared to engage in. To date, attempted breaches have numbered as 17, while successful breaches have numbered as 6. See Addendum 682-D. Addendum 682-B, portion of recorded transcript of Now why did you kill those farmers? No verbal communication. If you don't talk now, we will remove you from this attempt and place you back into… Incomprehensible. Pardon? Motions to move the microphone closer. Incomprehensible. Speak up! Move the mic up closer. They were… The next part is incomprehensible. That microphone has only so much gain. Move closer to it. His throat's messed up, man. Look at it. He ain't talking. Gask and screams are heard from within the audio tape. SCP-682 says they were disgusting. Doctor retreats from the room. End log. Addendum 682-D. Breaches with SCP-682. First occurrence. Handled by agent. 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 KIA. Personnel D-129. KIA. Personnel D-027. KIA. Personnel D-173. KIA. Personnel D-200. KIA. Personnel D-193. KIA. Second Occurrence. Handled by Agent. Agent. Doctor. Personnel 124. Personnel D-137. KIA. Personnel D-201. KIA. Personnel D-202. KIA. Personnel D-203. KIA. Third Occurrence. Handled by Agent. Master Sergeant. Agent. Agent. KIA. Personnel D-018. KIA. Personnel D-211. KIA. Personnel D-216. Fourth Occurrence. Handled by Agent. Staff Sergeant. Technical Sergeant. Private. Private. Lieutenant. 
Staff Sergeant KIA Colonel KIA Private KIA Private KIA Agent KIA Fifth Occurrence Handled by Personnel D-221 Agent KIA Agent KIA Agent KIA Personnel D-028 KIA Personnel D-111 KIA Personnel D-281 KIA Personnel D-209 KIA Six Occurrence Handled by Agent Agent Personnel D-291 MIA Agent KIA Agent KIA Personnel D-299 KIA Personnel D-277 KIA Personnel D-278 KIA Personnel D-279 KIA Addendum 682-E Termination Options Log of Event 682-E18 Doctor Attempts to use SCP-409 and SCP-682 General General and Doctor Observing 0400 Exposure SCP-682 began to tear at the point of contact, causing massive trauma to the area. SCP-682 requests several times to know what it has been exposed to. 0800 hours. Crystallization began spreading much slower than normal. 1200 hours. SCP-682 shows signs of extreme pain and begins having seizures. 1300 hours. Crystallization stops at 62% conversion. Crystallized area explodes, causing massive physical trauma to SCP-682. 1400 hours. SCP-682 recovered from exposure despite the loss of limbs and organs. SCP-682 begins regeneration, stating that it will attempt to kill and consume all staff involved in Event 682-E18. SCP-682 appears to now be immune to SCP-409. Use of other SCP items to terminate SCP-682 must now first be tested on samples of SCP-682 before full-scale testing. In accordance with the Dr. Recommendation, see Document 27B-6, Dr. and Dr. have requested permission to attempt the extermination of SCP-682 using SCP-689. The request is currently pending approval from the it has been suggested by Dr. Gears to use SCP-182 in an attempt to communicate with SCP-682. SCP-182 has expressed reluctance and refuses to enter the containment center of SCP-682, if at all possible. Addendum 682-F Termination Logs Experiment Log T-98816-OC-108 682 The next audio tape provided will be of said termination log, provided you have proper clearance. Test log T 98816 OC 108 forward slash 682. Cross SCP termination testing for SCP 682. Due to the highly aggressive, adaptive, and intelligent nature of SCP 682, termination testing has been ordered with clearance from O5 Command. With major concerns raised about possible developed immunities due to the failure of SCP 409 and possible adaptations. All tests must first be carried out on tissue samples taken from SCP-682. This step may be bypassed only by O5 command order. Item number SCP-689 Tissue test record overridden by O5 command. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-689. Lights shut off in containment area. Lights remain extinguished for five minutes. Lights are switched on. SCP-689 remains in its original position. SCP-682 is in a pool of gray and black liquid with no observable life signs. 
D-Class issued a physically verified SCP-682 termination, with two agents supervising. D-Class enters three steps into the containment area when SCP-682 rapidly rises and attacks D-Class personnel. SCP-682 breaks containment and escapes, killing one agent in the process. Remaining agent killed by SCP-689 due to accidental observation during testing. Notes. It appears that SCP-682 is not alive in a way that is currently understood, or is immune to SCP-689. In addition, it appears SCP-682 has prior knowledge of SCP-689, or was somehow able to understand its function in order to play possum and escape. Item number SCP-017 Tissue test record. Sample swallowed by SCP-017 without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-017. SCP-682 issues several sounds at extremely high volume, damaging several e recording devices. Sound extends across several wavelengths, reported as the most god-awful roar by staff. 017 appears to stumble, then return to a far corner of the containment area. 682 attempts to break containment of both 682 and 017. 682 suppressed by agents and removed. 682 states, You foul bags of tissue, you don't- Note, it is unclear if SCP-682 somehow damaged 017 or communicated with it. Analysis of the recorded sound is ongoing. Item SCP-162 Tissue test record. Sample entangled without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to 162. 682 begins thrashing violently, emitting several roaring sounds and issuing profanity directed at testing staff. 682 becomes entangled with SCP-162, primarily in the lower body, head, and left forelimb. Entangled areas undergo massive trauma due to 682 thrashing. After four minutes of continued exposure, 682 lunges away from 162, severing its lower jaw and left hind limb, and causing serious tissue damage to many areas of its body. 162 remains attached to the left forelimb of 682. 682 breaks containment using 162 against several agents, staff, and researchers, resulting in 11 deaths and 86 injuries. Forelimb and 162 removed from SCP-682 during re-establishment of containment. Two additional deaths occurred during the re-containment of SCP-162. Note, General has requested that Mr. Noakuyum and the members of staff involved with the approval of this test report to Site Command for a disciplinary hearing. Item SCP-061, Tissue Test Record, overridden by O5 Command. 682 exposed to 061. 682 enters the relaxed state consistent with SCP-061 exposure. 682 is given the command, Lie Down. 682 remains unresponsive. Command retreated twice before 682 lowers itself to the ground. Movements noted to be very sluggish and jerky. 682 given the command, roll onto your back. 682 unresponsive. Command repeated three times. 682 shudders several times, partially rolling over before returning to former position. Command repeated six times. 682 appears to undergo a violent seizure, partially rising before collapsing to the floor. 682 given the command, stand up. 682 rapidly rises and breaches containment. 682 ignores all commands given to it. Several agents and staff respond to re-establish containment. 682 emits a high-pitched screech. All human beings in a 15-meter radius suddenly enter the relaxed state consistent with SCP-061 exposure. 682 consumes several members of staff before being recontained by specially equipped emergency response teams. Sonic stun adaptation lost from SCP-682 after two weeks. Note, study into how SCP-682 integrated SCP-061 into its biology is ongoing. Item SCP-053, Tissue Test Record, Not Available, Overridden by O5 Command Termination Test Record SCP-682 introduced the 053 containment area. 682 appears to be very confused and shows no signs of being affected by 053. 053 appears to be afraid of 682 and hides behind a chair in her containment area. 682 lowers itself to the ground, resting its head on the floor. 
SCP-053 approaches 682 and after several seconds of hesitation briefly touches SCP-682 before rapidly returning to her hiding place. 682 does not react in any way. 053 approaches 682 and pats its head, causing it to exhale through its forward nostrils. 053 claps and hops in place several times before embracing the head of 682. For the remainder of the testing period, 682 appears to be in a very docile state with only two low-level escape attempts being made. 053 is observed to bring toys and other items to SCP-682 and make several drawings on its forward carapace with crayons. Staff entering at the end of the test phase are immediately attacked by 682, resulting in two deaths and five injuries. 682 contained and moved to separate containment unit. 053 observed crying for several minutes after 682 is removed. Note, the reaction of SCP-682 is notable for several reasons. First, it is one of the few incidents where SCP-682 has come in contact with biological tissue and not entered a rage state. Second, it has raised questions as to the physical makeup and composition of 053 in regards to the lack of response from 682. Third, it has provided a possible solution to long-term containment. However, approval for the mutual containment of two highly dangerous SCP items in a single containment unit is not likely. Item SCP-123 Tissue Test Record Tissue Sample Absorbed by the Core Termination Test Record Test cancelled after review of testing done between 162 and 682. The potential issues arising from 682 gaining control of 123 are too great at this time. Review of this proposal will be made if 682 is totally incapacitated by some means, with no potential of escape or sudden adaptation. Item SCP-173 Tissue Test Record Not available overridden by O5 Command Termination Test Record 682 introduced into the containment area of SCP-173. 682 makes several screeching noises and quickly presses against the wall furthest from 173, staring at it the entire time. 682 continues to stare at 173 without pause for six hours. Agents equipped with large caliber sniper rifles dispatched and shoot out the eyes of 682, at the same time stopping all observations of 173 and 682. After resuming observation, SCP-682 is shown to be on the floor with several injuries around its head, neck, and legs. 173 is seen to have tissue from 682 on its hands. 682 rapidly regenerates damage and moves to a different wall, developing several sets of eyes in various parts of its body, many covered by thick, clear caps of armored carapace. 682 remains observation of 173 for an additional 12 hours despite additional efforts of agents and Foundation staff. 682 allowed to exit containment area and recaptured in temporary containment. Note, after review, it appears that SCP-173 was unable to do lethal damage to 682 due to a major difference in physical size. A possible repeat of this test may be made if 682 is damaged enough to reduce its physical mass to a level equal with 173. Item Dr. Cleth Tissue test record not available. Termination test record. 682 introduced the testing area. Dr. Cliff introduced the testing area. Dr. Cliff and 682 stare at each other for approximately three minutes. Dr. Cliff slowly backs out of the testing area as SCP-682 continues to stare. Dr. Cliff attempts to open door testing area. Door testing area determined to be locked. Dr. Cliff reportedly uses several loud expletives and then attaches an unknown device to the door, keeping his eyes on 682 the whole time. 682 continues to stare. Dr. Cliff detonates a small plastic explosive charge in the door, causing a containment breach. 682 continues to stare. Dr. Cliff engages emergency secondary lockdown doors and declares a partial containment situation. 682 does not react. Dr. Cliff proceeds to experiment observation center. Two minutes later, SCP-682 somehow kills Dr. The project head by broken neck caused by blunt force trauma against the control panel, despite remaining in the testing area. Note, this is the official story and we're sticking to it. The alternative, that someone tried to murder Dr. Clef by deliberately putting him in the same room as 682 is completely inconsiderable. 057 Item, High Altitude Impact Tissue Test Record Denied by 05 Termination Test Record Testing Denied by 05 Notes, seriously? I mean seriously, drop it out of an aircraft and let it fall. Item, one ordinary human child. Tissue test record not available. 
Termination test record. Child began to scream and cry when 682 was introduced into the cell. Subject was immediately and messily devoured by 682. Note, okay, that didn't work so well. Maybe the fact that the kid was crying made 682 perceive it as a hostile intent. Guest researcher Dr. W. Item, one ordinary human child. Drug to cancel extreme emotional reaction. Tissue test record in a... Termination test record. Child stood and smiled, giggling at SCP-682 with no sign of fear. 682 devoured the subject messily. Notes, hmm, maybe we can try that again. I'm sure somewhere out there there's a kid who will make friends with it like SCP-053 did. Guest researcher Dr. W. Item. Guest researcher Dr. W. Tissue test record not available. Termination test record. Subject screamed in terror and pounded on the door to the test facility, begging to be let out. SCP-682 devoured it messily three minutes after being introduced. Note, fucking sadistic asshole. I got no sympathy for that moron whatsoever. Introducing children is fucking monster. What the hell? Assistant Director Clef. Item. Cutting laser. Tissue test record. Tissue sample was successfully bisected 13 times before adopting a mirrored finish. Termination test record. After multiple attempts, the main body of SCP-682 was successfully bisected into parts that were equal in mass at T plus 7, 13 hours. Dead scraps were removed from the room while the two halves subsequently designated SCP-682-A and 682-B regenerated. After the recovery period, 682-A and B appeared to survey the area and evaluate each other, presumably in anticipation of attack. Surface fluctuations indicative of internal modification were noted, but all external changes occurred and disappeared far too quickly to be adequately described. High-energy bioluminescent organs on the face, spine, and forelimbs were observed as well as both specimens, usually forming, pulsing, and disappearing again over the course of a few seconds. At T plus 3542 hours, SCP-682 A and B simultaneously collapsed on the floor and all vital signs ceased, remaining in a state for the following 48 hours. At T plus 84 hours, the laser was used again in an attempt to cut A and B into more manageable pieces, leading to minor structural damage to the room as the laser beam reflected off their skin. As both A and B remained immobile despite the increased potential for escape, two D-Class personnel were released into the room immediately upon their entry. Technical failure of the observation equipment and test chamber breach was detected from outside, activating Safety Protocol T-98816-OC-108 forward slash 682 n 147 Containment was successfully re-established at the cost of Security personnel D-Class personnel and Researchers, including doctors the majority of the testing area was considered unsalvageable and demolished for later reconstruction. Experiment Supervisor Dr. was found unconscious and in critical condition outside the observation chamber. See medical logs for medical staff succeeded in sufficiently reviving him to be debriefed by Agent whereupon he was harshly reprimanded and Note. Only one SCP-682 was found in the lockdown area surrounding the wreckage, apparently at near full mass rather than the expected 50%. Scattered tissues within the facility account for the missing mass. Dr. <laughs> testimony indicates that SCP-682-A and B exhibited a high degree of coordination following the security breach, but that once scp 682 B became heavily damaged by security personnel. It was immediately devoured and reabsorbed by 682A. Total loss of one of the 682 specimens is considered highly improbable, and searches have been called to a halt. Agent. Note: Much as our department would love to know whether 682 retained a single consciousness during its dissection, or whether the two counterparts were actually able to cooperate until the stalemate was ended by external forces, for practical purposes. We do not, under any circumstances, advise trying that again. Dr. Noah Kium Item: 60 megaton thermal nuclear bomb. No tissue test record. Termination test record. Testing de denied by O5. Notes: One would think that putting 682 in the epicenter of an explosion that can cause third-degree burns at a distance of 300 kilometers is a good idea, but as long as there are odds of survival, we simply cannot go through it. Yes, it's a goddamn nuke, but if 682 survives and adapts, we'd be boned beyond belief. O5 Item SCP-914 
Tissue test record. Termination test record. A fine or very fine is no longer to be used by any personnel having contact with SCP-682 at any point. In addition, any objects have come in contact with 682 at any point are no longer allowed to be processed by SCP-914. Any attempts to subvert this directive? Notes. 682 is too large to fit into the booths in most forms. In addition, the tissue tests have shown that 682 has unpredictable reactions to 914. Finally, SCP-914 is too valuable a research tool and too delicate for this type of test. It was nearly damaged after the incident, noted CN-682-119857, and be repeated. Should the results be recovered? Notes. Does this really surprise anyone given what 914 does to normal organics? Dr. G. Item. SCP-826 equipped with one copy of the generally nice, friendly thing that can and will kill SCP-682 permanently if it so much as spots that damn lizard. A twelve-page short story written by Dr. Detailing a large, friendly monster that is stated to be capable of permanently killing 682 and one D-Class personnel equipped with one 2010 Ducati Multistrada motorcycle for the purpose of evading 682. Tissue test record not available. Termination test record. Story is put between SCP-826 and placed in a large, empty room in dimension with a remotely operated doorway large enough to send 682 through. 682 is brought in front of an entryway securely. Once researchers clear the area, the door is remotely opened, exposing a green pasture similar to the one described in the story. 682 is reluctant to go through, so D-682-32 is sent through as bait. 682 follows through the doorway, whereupon the doorway closes behind him. Thirty minutes later, 682 bursts back through the door and is sent through, somewhat worse for wear, killing researchers and Agent in the process. Recovery personnel describe the story's pasture as having become a battleground, featuring impact craters with enormous body parts scattered around. Parts are thought to be from the story's thing. Recovered stories retitled The Generally Nice Friendly Thing That Tried to Kill SCP-682 Permanently But Failed, and is noticeably thicker with 209 individual patients that detail an epic battle between the two monsters. Additional attempts to coax 682 into 826 have been met with non-compliance on SCP-682's part. Item SCP-743 Tissue Test Record Sample Consumed Without Incident Mobile container with SCP-743 was transported to testing chamber, into which SCP-682 was released from primary containment. SCP-743's container was opened remotely. 743 observed resting. 682 appears to ignore 743. After minutes, SCP-743 started flowing. 682 appeared to notice within seconds. 682 cautiously approached 743 and tasted its flowing liquid. 682 started to lap up the liquid from 743. After sec, SCP-682 grasped 743 with its forelimb and started pouring the liquid straight from 743 into its mouth. SCP-682 drank for minutes, at times, on its back. 743 stopped flowing and started feeding. 682 tried to fight off Ant Swarm, but was soon covered. Swarm started to feed on 682, who stopped moving. Minutes later, after SCP-682 had been reduced to 79% of its original mass, 682 opened its mouth and stuck out its tongue. 682's tongue had become 5 meters long and sticky like an anteater's tongue. 682 started to lap up ants off of itself with its tongue, eating thousands of ants at once. 682 and 743 continued to feed off each other for hours until testing was terminated. 682 displayed faster and normal regeneration for days afterward. Adapted tongue remained for days. SCP-743 treated SCP-682 as organic, but that's hardly conclusive proof. More significant is the question of whether consuming 743's liquid contributed to 682's heightened regenerative abilities. If as suspected, it did, 743 and 682 need to stay far, far away from each other. Dr. Lambert Items SCP-063 
tissue test record. Sample eradicated, no traces above molecular level remain. Termination test record. SCP-063 was refitted to the end of a rotary arm, which was deployed into 682's enclosure. Initial approach proved partially successful, with SCP-682 losing more than 20% body weight before regeneration overtakes the destruction process. Newly regrown tissues are not vulnerable to SCP-063's eradication effect. 682 destroys the deployment arm and 063 digs a hole through the enclosure's ground where it was later recovered. 682 succeeds in extending a large, prehensile limb through the hole and maiming two security personnel before containment re-established. Hypothesis 682 is not bound to base Earth biological chemistry and can adapt itself to be organic or inorganic as necessary. Some of the boys in the lab are arguing where we can even classify it as living, at least as we understand life. This worries me, because an unliving, undying, intelligent monster, well, that's where you start getting sacrifices in your name. Dr. Zera Item SCP-087, Tissue Test Record Not Available, Termination Test Record A 682 Special, 10 kg of rotten meat and sharpened bone splinters, 10 liters of rancid mayonnaise, 1 liter potassium cyanide and 1 kg morphine hydrochloride combined into a solid mass, then transmuted via SCP-807, was dumped into the testing room. SCP-682 devoured Special, then began loudly demanding more. Nine minutes later, SCP-682 collapsed. After 45 minutes of observation, 682 had not moved. Two D-Class personnel in anti-807 environment suits were sent in to verify that 682 was in fact terminated. D-Class were equipped with further specials in case 682 required further distracting. Specials were placed on ground in front of SCP-682's head. In response, 682 opened its eyes and began gnawing weakly on nearest special. D-Class personnel began touching 682, believing it had been rendered harmless. At this point, 682's skin ruptured in at least 11 locations, releasing ultra-high pressure, estimated 2.7 impascals, jets of blood in all directions. Contact with 682's blood breached the integrity of the anti-807 environment suits, and both D-Class personnel were contaminated. D-Class personnel began by the time 682 had finished consuming the second special, its skin had healed over and both D-Class personnel had terminated. 682 then devoured the third special with the same speed and enthusiasm it had devoured the first. Item SCP-662 Tissue Test Record Not Available Termination Test Record Mr. Deeds is summoned and asked if he can destroy 682 permanently. Mr. Deeds responds, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm afraid I can't. Mr. Deeds is asked if he can kill 682. Mr. Deeds responds, Again, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I can't. Mr. Deeds is asked if he can incapacitate 682. Mr. Deeds responds, As a matter of fact, depending on how sir means the word incapacitate, and depending on how long sir wishes the creature to be incapacitated, yes. Mr. Deeds is asked to expand on how he would perform such an action. Mr. Deeds responds, Sir, the simplest and quickest method, which I must point out would not be the most efficient, would be for me to offer myself up to the creature to devour me. Certainly its offensive capabilities would be lessened while it is occupied in consuming my flesh. This would be simplest as it requires no preparation on my part, sir. But I'm certain you'll understand that this overall effect on the creature would be insignificant. Were I to engage the creature in combat, either with or without weapons, I could certainly occupy its attention and offensive capabilities for a longer interval. Unfortunately, I'm afraid the creature would eventually defeat me, at which point it would begin consuming my flesh as I have previously described. However, I could certainly booby-trap my person with a variety of noxious substances. Sulfurics, perhaps, or explosives, or perhaps encapsulated neurotoxins, or even so that when the creature does inevitably consume me, it sustains further damage. That said, sir, I must remind you that the creature's tendency towards regeneration means that any damage I inflict would be sadly temporarily. Mr. Deeds is thanked and dismissed. Notes: Mr. Deeds' knowledge of is not to be considered a security breach. Item SCP-738, Tissue Test Record Not Available Termination Test Record Researcher sits in SCP-738-2 and asks, What would you want in exchange for permanently destroying the entity which we refer to as 682, while leaving this planet, its biosphere, its human population, its human civilization, the SCP Foundation, and the rest of the universe intact? 
entity takes form of the same entity as Test 203, states, Your Foundation couldn't afford it, and you personally and definitely couldn't afford it, and does not respond further. Item SCP-272 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record SCP-682 is released in an enclosure amidst a circular array of 30 2,000-watt stadium lights, of which only one is switched on. SCP-272 is dropped onto SCP-682's shadow and embeds itself in the reinforced concrete as expected. 682 quickly discovers that it is trapped by, by 272's presence in its shadow and starts to attack 272. 682 then stops midway through his attack, examines 272 closely, bellows an incomprehensible string of words and slowly backs away from 272. All thirty stadium lights are then switched on and off in random, stroboscopic disco pattern at 4 Hz. SCP-682 is forcibly hurled around the enclosure in random directions in accordance with the stroboscopic pattern, and sustains heavy damage. 682 continues luminescing for 48 hours, remaining immobile for the duration. D-Class personnel who recovered SCP-272 from the enclosure were not attacked, but sustained permanent retinal damage from 682's luminescence despite wearing eye shields. After 48 hours, 682 resumes normal activity. Note, how did 682 know not to attack 272? Did it recognize the artifact? Was it able to read the glyphs carved in the 272 surface? If 682 is literate, it is vulnerable to textual mimetic kill agents? Suggested methods for a viability study are welcome. Item number SCP-343 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record See Incident Report 682-TFTBS1 Item SCP-963 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record See Incident Report 682 w 0 2BTL Item SCP-702 Tissue Test Record Tissue sample offered as trade item to SCP-702-1. 702-1 accepted, trading it for what appears to be a two-patty hamburger as commonly sold by the <laughs> franchise. Termination Test Record SCP-682 is contained and offered as a trade item to 702-1. 702-1 considers the tank for roughly 13 minutes before taking it. Item left in exchange is a metal cage containing a specimen of a rose-ringed parakeet. Sixteen hours later, SCP-682 is returned to the chamber where the trading was affected without its containment tank. SCP-702-1 is reluctant to divulge information regarding this event. Examination of debris regurgitated by 682 during the preceding recontainment reveals fragments from a number of curious items, including the parakeet is currently being kept at Dr. Quarter's office. Item SCP-096 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record Containment tank containing SCP-096 was placed in SCP-682 cell. Personnel vacated vicinity and the tank was opened remotely. Screams of the two entities continue for 27 hours, at which point the noise abruptly stops. Sonar-based video feeds reveal SCP-096 severely wounded and huddled in the southwest corner, apparently upset. Feed shows SCP-682 in the north end of the room, approximately 85% of its initial mass absent. Recontainment teams retrieve both entities with relative ease. Further attempts to expose SCP-096 to SCP-682 causes it to turn away from 682, jumping in place while clawing at its face and screaming. Item SCP-536 Tissue Test Record Tissue divided into samples and subject to the individual effects of SCP-536's dials. Notable results follows. Increase in G. Tissue restructured itself into neutron degenerate matter. Decrease in E. Tissue re maintains loose integrity as a cloud of ions, regenerates upon re-establishment of normal laws of physics. Decrease in Theta. Tissue disintegrates. Termination Test Record SCP-682's containment tank inserted into SCP-536. Speed of light, strong nuclear force, and fundamental charge dials increase progressively. 682's containment tank is nearly immediately destroyed and 682's body begins disintegrating. Due to the intense light and radiation, visual is lost. Free neutrons, pions, kaons, and more exotic mesons described in are detected. 
55 seconds into the experiment, the primary detection equipment fails. Upon boot up of the secondary detection equipment, dials are at minimum levels. 682 is again visible in the chamber, reduced to roughly 1% of its normal size. Analysis suggests 682 has reformed into a previously unknown form of matter, kept together by quantum effects. Assistant researcher becomes aggressive and turns the dials randomly and violently before being removed from the premises. 682 recovers its original shape upon restoration of standard physics. Note, I don't blame him. I could swear at one point that thing looked like it was actually enjoying the experience. Item SCP-524 Tissue Test Record Sample Consumed Without Incident Termination Test Record SCP-524 and 682 introduced in the testing chamber. 682 examines 524 suspiciously, at which point SCP-524 begins gnawing on 682's anterior right limb. 682 jumps backward, bellowing. SCP-524 pursues SCP-682 for two minutes, at which point 682 climbs four meters up the wall of the testing chamber and beyond its reach. 524 ceases pursuit and begins washing its face with its paws. It continues its activity for 15 minutes, during which time 682 remains 4 meters up the wall and beyond SCP-524's reach. SCP-524 then crosses the other side of the test chamber and begins breaching containment. Test aborted. Item SCP-811 Tissue Test Record Sample Consumed Without Incident Termination Test Record Direct exposure of SCP-811 to SCP-682 disallowed due to unreasonably high risk of specimen loss. Instead, mucus from SCP-811's palmal plantar surfaces is collected over a course of months and then sprayed on SCP-682 with high-pressure hoses. SCP-682's body mass is reduced by 27% before the mucus reaches a complete bone covering of the remaining body mass and is unable to decay it further. Item number SCP-1237 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record A deliberate containment breach was introduced when an SCP-1237-1-L specimen was permitted to observe from a safe distance. Thirteen security personnel were killed before containment was re-established. Subject was dosed with to encourage Rimsley an onset of SCP-1237 and instructed to dream what SCP-682 was a small house cat with no special abilities and that the security team had been able to destroy it easily. Seven seconds after onset of SCP-1237 event, subject begins to seize violently. Subject was declared dead after 32 seconds. Autopsy discovered the subject's body covered with scratch and bite marks and infected with bubonic plague, toxoplasmosis, cat scratch fever. The bodies of the deceased security personnel displayed similar characteristics. A small house cat was found in SCP-682's containment chamber, cleaning blood off of his coat. Said cat regenerated into SCP-682 within three hours. SCP-1361 Tissue Test Record Sample consumed without incident, DNA markers from SCP-682 present in SCP-1361 sample afterwards. Sample showed increased resistance to incineration. Termination Test Record a secondary sample of SCP-1361 was allowed to grow to 100 kg in mass. 682's containment chamber was purged of acid and 1361 was poured into SCP-682 from above. 1361 covered and fully engulfed 682 and no activity was observed for three hours. In the period from three to seven hours following exposure, SCP-1361 began to develop legs, jaws, and a physical appearance similar to SCP-682. 1361 breached containment and attacked Foundation staff in a manner consistent with an SCP-682 breach and killed 17 personnel. 1361 proved immune to small arms fire in the state. Aerial dispersal of napalm was necessary to destroy sample by incineration, after which a skeletal and circulatory system identical to 682 was retrieved from its remains. Remains were returned to SCP-682's containment chamber, where they regenerated into SCP-682 within six hours. Subsequent tissue testing indicated that 682 temporarily contained DNA markers from several species present in 1361, as well as temporarily exhibiting a mild scent similar to pork rinds. Item SCP-1933 Tissue Test Record Sample immersed in one liter of bodily fluids from SCP-1933 Sample fully converted into Irish cream Termination Test Record 200 liters of bodily fluids were collected from SCP-1933 over a three-month period. Fluids were introduced into SCP-1933 
SCP-682's containment chamber in bulk. SCP-682 began consuming fluids rapidly and manifesting apparent signs of intoxication far more rapidly than a human would after consuming an equivalent amount of Irish cream. This has been hypothesized to be the result of portions of SCP-682's anatomy being transubstantiated into Irish cream. However, instead of dying, SCP-682 continues consuming the fluids. When it has finished consuming all the fluids, SCP-682 collapses on the floor and begins loudly vocalizing while clawing spasmodically at its face and abdomen. After five minutes of this, 682 begins vomiting up what appears to be the bodily fluids of SCP-1933, but in much larger quantities. As well, the floors and walls of the containment chamber are instantly converted into Irish cream upon contact with the vomitus, resulting in structural failure and containment breach. Test aborted. Remainder of vomitus incinerated. SCP-682 subsequently manifests no further signs of intoxication. Item number SCP-507, Tissue Test Record in A, Termination Test Record SCP-507 was physically attached to SCP-682's left forelimb with nylon zip ties, while 682 was inactive due to physical destruction incurred during an unrelated containment breach. Attending personnel continued to spray 682's body, with the exception of the limb to which 507 was attached, with hydrochloric acid provided via high-pressure hoses. After 7 hours and 52 minutes, SCP-507's anomalous properties activated, and it and 682 both disappeared. SCP-507 remanifested in an unpopulated area adjacent to the site. Approximately 8,000 kilometers away, 63 hours later, attached to an entity possessing large fangs and a pair of vegetable wings, but otherwise identical to 682, by nylon zip ties of a different color than the ones applied by containment personnel at the beginning of the test. A handwritten note was pinned to SCP-507's chest, reading as follows. Dear Universe 5802 Sigma Blue Romeo, it's your problem now, suckers. Item SCP-2599 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record SCP-2599 was ordered to attack SCP-682 until it is 200% dead. SCP-2599 proceeded to engage SCP-682 in combat for 42 minutes, at the end of which three of 682's limbs have been severed, its thorax has been crushed, and both its eyeballs have been ruptured. SCP-2599 then seized SCP-682's head, apparently in preparation for pulling it off of its body. In response, SCP-682 vocalized the phrase, Kill me, you sack of organs! Do it! SCP-2599 immediately released SCP-682 and stood unmoving until security personnel removed it from the testing chamber. Subsequent attempts to terminate SCP-682 before it could regenerate from its injuries were ineffective. Note, it is hypothesized that the concrete kill me in some way took precedence over the more abstract attack it until it's 200% dead.